people, Zach here again today, and uh, I apologize for the poor camera lighting. I had to switch computers because I dropped my computer, other one in the sink. Um, so the camera on this computer isn't that well. It's about as good as I can get. Now I know I normally do uh, videos on physics. I've done a couple of rants about programming stuff and whatnot, uh, but today I'm going to be doing a um, big change of pace. I'm going to be talking about um, my personal opinions on uh, viruses and vaccination, and uh, particularly the COVID pandemic. Um, mask mandates, um, st stuff like this. Uh, you know, forewarning, you know, the um, necessary disclaimer for legal purposes that I am not a doctor. This is my opinion. I'm taking it with a grain of salt. So, uh, first things first, talking about viruses and how they spread. Um, obviously, to get a virus, you uh, to contract a virus, if you're infected with it, you have to be in contact with it. Um, and there's different ways that the virus can enter your body. You can inhale it, um, you can ingest it, uh, it can through skin contact. Um, now, the different ways that this can happen is it could be in the air if it's a pathogen. Um, it could also be on a surface, um, in which case you, you touch a surface uh, and then you end up touching your face sometime later. And in the process, like especially if you're getting near your eyes or uh, near your mouth, uh, you can end up spreading and getting in, uh, ingested that way or inhaled that way. Um, so, uh, this is one of the problems that comes with the uh, mask mandates. Because one of the things is that the masks that they're uh, they they're forcing people to wear masks, but at the same point in time they don't declare what type of masks that people are supposed to be wearing, um, and or how long that they're supposed to be wearing those, or whether or not they should be reusing the mask. Because I mean, all of these things are very important things. So one is that if you don't have a well-fitted mask, uh, you could constantly be touching your face, which completely undermines the purpose of why you're wearing a mask, which is to um, keep it from getting on your face. Uh, second thing as well is that wearing it for long periods of time, your breath uh, it can actually cause moisture to build up on the outside and because you're creating a vacuum when you inhale, uh, you're actually sucking particles that are in the air into, onto the surface of the mask. And this is one of the reasons why doctors and nurses, they're not, they don't wear masks for extended period of time, uh, periods of time. Um, same situation with like OSHA. OSHA doesn't, um, has particular mandates for how long someone's allowed to uh, wear a mask. Now, um, and that's not to say that they're not effective at all. The thing is that you have to be swapping out masks, and this is just something that people aren't doing. So they're not using the right kind of masks. They're constantly fiddling with their masks. And uh, they're also, um, they're not fitting them, so they're touching their face. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different issues that are involved here. And this, these are all different issues that have been stated explicitly before by people uh, who have been in positions where they were giving advice to the country, particularly Fauci. Fauci has stated this in multiple different interviews and multiple different situations. And of course, this is kind of flip-flopped uh, in the past. So he, I believe he was right the first time. Uh, this is kind of common sense stuff. This is basic virology. We've known this for ages now. Um, and the thing with viruses as well is that in just general um, different diseases is that uh, being sanitary, washing your hands, um, washing your face, these uh, having access to clean water, um, you know, things like this generally prevent most diseases. Um, we're actually, when you consider uh, today what we deal with compared to what we've dealt with in the past, um, we're way better off as a society. We've dealt with way, way worse. Um, and then that's not to undermine anything that we're doing today, but... Um, so anyway, that's just my opinions on the particular mask mandates. Now, on that topic as well, um, about with people like Fauci, uh, when the pandemic was first beginning, um, this is before it was even declared a pandemic, the World Health Organization had made a statement that the disease was non-human to human transmissible. Um, and at this same exact time, Trump would issue the travel ban uh, to try to defend the U.S. against the disease. And uh, in retaliation to that, the people who were in Congress, such as Nancy Pelosi, or in the front house, I should say, um, were staging a protest that is an anti-xenophobic protest where um, it's basically like a party where they hug Chinese purple. Um, I don't quite understand what that's about uh, and that seemed really really fishy to me when I first saw it and so my initial reaction to this is like okay this is obviously a cover-up because um, that's really really bizarre like no one would ever do that and for the World Health Organization to make a statement so matter-of-factly about something that was just came out and they couldn't possibly have researched in depth um, kind of got me concerned. So I kind of put two to two really, really early on 
that this had come from the Wuhan Virology Institute um, in China. And my major concern at the time was that it was probably a bioweapon. Because uh, we've been at odds with uh, China for quite some time. And I know that with the trade wars that were happening uh, under Trump that some situations... Um, I, I didn't know how that was going to escalate at the time, let's just say that. So uh, even when people were saying that it was no big deal, I was already convincing uh, my family members to stockpile food. And so we still have food, a bunch of food stocked up underneath our, uh, our tables and stuff. And so I was wearing a mask everywhere and whatnot. Now, um, later on, the opinion on this obviously changed. Uh, there was uh, a lockdown that happened for a couple of months. Um, There's a whole bunch of different things that it... Uh, transpired after this whole issue went down uh, and over time my opinion started to change because what I was looking at is I was looking at uh, how the government's responding to this how the media was responding to this and how um, particular officials um, and corporations and it instantly became obvious to me um, or I shouldn't say instantly but rather really quickly it became obvious to me that this was a power grab uh, and not just like a power is in like tyrannical power, but like more like a, a monetary thing. And I think the biggest evidence to this is if you talk about people uh, who are like Fauci or even like corporations like Google, uh, there are money trails that lead directly from these corporations to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And so these money trails have led many people who are conspiracy theorists to believe that um, these corporations are trying to do a mass depopulation or that they're trying to... Um, push forth like a new tyrannical regime or something like that and I think it's I think the real explanation um, is a lot simpler than that and it's not I think the real explanation here is that many of these corporations and these companies are partnered at least or have themselves have stock in various uh, vaccine companies like Pfizer um, or even like Microsoft Microsoft stock Microsoft um, or Bill Gates in particular actually is a uh, I'm not sure if it's under the same company name or it might be something new now, actually. But I know that he's been pushing some vaccine stuff as well. Um, so this is one of those situations that looks to me like um, they created a solution first, and then they created a problem to which they could provide the solution. Um, so it seems to me like it's a wealth grab, like it's a way that very uh, many rich and powerful people could have gained money really quickly. Uh, and this really couldn't have been done anywhere other than China, because like this kind of research, the gain-of-function research for viruses, is illegal in most places. And that's not to say that it doesn't happen. I'm pretty sure um, that it does, because when you make something illegal, it doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. It just means that when it's done, it's done in secret. Um, and this could be one of those... And one of the reasons that leads me to believe this as well is that, I think it was back in 2018, um, there were viruses that were being smuggled out of the U.S. from Harvard uh, into China, and I believe it was MERS and SARS, and they tried saying that the vaccines were stolen, which um, maybe they were, um, but thinking about it now, I'm kind of skeptical about that whole situation. Um, but going back to the, uh, the general idea of the viruses and uh, how to... Uh, deal with the situation, like masks, say for example, people say, well, you need to wear a mask to protect someone else, um, it's not going to work if you cough or sneeze inside of your mask, because you're just going to be blowing it out the sides of your mask, um, so that's not going to be, um, that effective, you're still going to be spreading it on surfaces, um, a mask is more protective against yourself, I mean, I guess, like, if you have, like, a light cough, it's more likely to block a little bit, and, uh, my whole opinion on that is, like, it either works or it doesn't, um, if you're wearing a mask uh, and you think it works, then well, whatever, you're protecting yourself. But if you're th expecting other people to wear masks to protect you, well, why do you want them to wear masks? Do you think that it's because you need to have two masks in order to protect you? Well, if you think there has to be two, then wear two. Um, so if you're wearing two masks and you think that everyone has to wear two masks in order for everyone to be protected, well, then wear four masks. Um, expecting other people to abide by your rules um, is just unrealistic to expect. Uh, and like like Fauci said, uh, this is a kind of thing that would make people uh, feel better and maybe feel more safe. Um, and I guess in a placebo like way that could be helpful. Uh, but I don't really see that as um, being truly safer than it already is. Now on the topic of vaccination, um, vaccines uh, vaccines in general are effective. They've been around for a very very long time. Uh, like polio back.
vaccines or like the bird flu vaccines. Of course, uh, some of these uh, vaccines were developed around the time that the particular de diseases were spreading out. Now, when it comes to uh, the the vaccines and the way that they work, uh, it's I'm not a virologist, but um, most of this stuff has uh, been well understood for long periods of time, and to the best of my knowledge, uh, the way that the uh, vaccines work is that they infect you with a much weaker version of the virus that your body can actually uh, deal with, that it can actually, um, that's not going to kill you. And so when your body is able to deal with this and survive this, it actually has the keys um, to unlock uh, a, vac a virus that is uh, much stronger so that you don't get infected with it as strongly. Um, and this is definitely something that's helpful. However, um, vaccines can also have side effects. You have people who can uh, have allergies. You also have, there's a particular type of, um, because it, there's not just an A virus, there are different strains of the viruses that are uh, localized to certain areas. Like the strain of COVID that is in uh, North Carolina is not going to be the same as the uh, strain of COVID that's in India. And so if you develop a vaccine that's for the strain that's in North Carolina and someone who has the strain from India takes it, it can actually cause uh, severe side effects that could actually make it worse. Um, now, and I can't remember the technical term for this, but apparently it's happened in the past from what I've heard. Um, now, uh, the other issue as well is that when we're talking about side effects is that you have short and long-term side effects. Um, short-term side effects like may include drowsiness, dizziness, headache, vomiting, nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea, who cares. Um, and those are small things. You can deal with those. They're not a big deal. Um, but you also have long-term side effects of certain medications. Like you can, there's a certain medications that um, 10 years from now or, you know, four or five years now from now might cause uh, heart palpations or uh, they might cause uh, cancer or Alzheimer's or who knows what else. And this happens all the time. Uh, how many commercials do you see on TV all the time where they're saying, you know, if you've taken X and X, Y medications over the la uh, over your lifetime and uh, uh, acquired X and Y disease, Z disease, um, call this particular law firm. We will help you um, get a settlement for your particular issue. This isn't that uncommon. Uh, now, the other aspect of this as well is that uh, if you understand something that's called the replicability crisis in science, um, most medical science that's published is wrong. And I mean, by most, I mean two-thirds. Uh, there was actually an, a study, I can't remember the name of the study off the top of my head, uh, but they took a hundred different uh, studies that were published in renowned medical journals, and uh, they tried to repeat all of the experiments in the studies. 97% um, of the hundred that they had found had claimed to have positive results. They were only able to repeat the experiments for 37 of them, and only 36 of those uh, yielded positive results, which means that the correctness rate is about two-thirds. And there's also other particular studies, like there was one that has an infographic that was done by Vox um, on foods that, uh, on whether or not foods are all um, related to cancer in some way, and come to find out like, that there are studies that show that certain things both cause and prevent cancer with relatively high enough p-values. And we should be skeptical because something can't both cause and prevent cancer. Um, so it's fishy. And that's the thing to understand about medical science is that it's it's science, but it's in, a, in its terms of its effectiveness, it's basically pseudoscience, um, especially when it comes to fields of psychology. Um, they try to apply scientific methodology, but scientific methodology just doesn't map that well onto biology. Um, Anyhow, um, and when it comes to vaccines, um, just one last note because I'm, my computer's getting ready to run dead here. Um, talking about long-term side effects, uh, when you have things like the flu vaccines that are uh, taken every single uh, uh, flu season, which can have, I think it happens like twice a year or something like that, um, they're constantly developing new forms of the vaccine, and there's not just, and when I say they, I don't mean like any particular individual, because there are actually multiple different vaccines, 
and the um, the issues with the side effects are real because like even with COVID I think there was uh, I know at one point in time there was only like four vaccines but now there's um, there might be more or less um, depending on some have been recalled because I know there were two that were in Europe that were um, recalled because they were killing people uh, and this is an issue especially if you're talking about governments that are trying to censor people who are spreading information because they're worried about people getting misinformation um, but the thing is that I don't trust other people to disseminate truth from fact any more than I can. Um, humans are fallible, regardless of whether it's them or me, and I would rather have access to that kind of information. And, um, but that's not to say that I'm entirely against it. Uh, I think rationally speaking, uh, if a disease is not even as deadly as the flu, as the original strain was, I'm not so sure about um, the Delta variant. Uh, I haven't looked too much into that. And I'm kind of skeptical of the claims about it being as dangerous as it is because of the way that it's been hyped, um, just like with the original one, because the original uh, COVID was not even as deadly as the flu. The flu was actually way more deadly than the original COVID. However, the original COVID spread way faster. And the thing with vaccines is that because you're infecting someone with a weaker strain of the virus, they technically are infected with it. So as you are forcing people to take more vaccinations, you are increasing the spread of the virus, which then amps up the the uh, the fear about the virus spreading, which then amps up people more um, uh, mandates for trying to force a particular treatments. It's like it's a negative feedback loop of terror. Um, but that's not to say that I wouldn't take the vaccine, but I do want there to be um, particular uh, conditions upon which this would happen. Uh, First of all, I want to take it in a safe place. I want to be like ne at least near a hospital with trained personnel, um, so in case if something goes wrong, uh, that I can be taken care of on the spot because uh, I don't know how my body's going to react to it. And I know that with uh, many different places, at least from the people that I've heard, that this is kind of the situation. Like if you go into a um, a vaccine place, they might they'll say you stay for a, a certain period of time before they'll let you leave, and uh, that that's fine. But I generally don't like the idea of getting vaccinated inside of a Walmart or in a drive through or parking lot um, because I don't know what kind of, I mean, how bad of my condition is going to be and it could take a half an hour in my area, at least in a rural area, for me to get to the hospital and I don't want to die on the way. Um, the second thing about this as well is that I want a professional opinion. Um, if I go to my doctor and my doctor says that the vaccine is not right for me, um, because I'm not at risk for the particular disease and that the side effects could be um, more dangerous to me than the actual vaccine, is, uh, than the actual disease itself, um, companies and, uh, and government need to respect that. They are not doctors. My doctor is a doctor. Um, the third aspect of this as well is that uh, if I personally don't feel that the vi uh, vaccine is right for me, which is my particular situation right now, I don't think I'm at risk. Um, according to the CDC's numbers for the original COVID, uh, my risk is dying for, like, for fatality is like something like 0 0.00003%. Um, but because I don't want to take it, if these companies are in court and uh, government are forcing me to take it or otherwise be jobless, homeless, um, living on the streets or in jail or heavily fined, um, there needs to be legal li liability. Uh, now, most of these vaccine companies, the way it's been is that if you go into these companies and you choose to get the vaccine, um, you can't hold the company liable. You kind of accept when you go into the, uh, the place that there are going to be a certain level of risk like this. Um, and these companies have to operate under this weight because anyone could go in and be, get this vaccine, get the sniffles or whatever, suit the company, and the company could end up going bankrupt um, even though they might have a good product. So it's understandable why those protections would exist uh, in the case where someone can opt into the situation. But if you're forcing people against their will to get a medical treatment that could harm them and it does end up harming them, someone has to be accountable. Um, so I would want it in writing that um, if anything happens to me, like if I end up dying, that I want a criminal case opened up against these particular companies for the amount of about 10 to $50 million uh, with the proceeds going to a particular charity of my choice. Um, and I do mean a criminal case, not a civil case, because this is straight up murder. You have forced, you have murdered me for one, and uh, for two, um, this shouldn't be allowed going forward. There should be a precedent upon which this is fixated. Um, three, I don't want to leave the burden with my family um, to seek the justice here, especially when they don't have the money for the lawyers, um, and they also are not the um, brightest cookies on the 
in, in the jar to be... Um, <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude here, I'm just saying, like, I don't know... They don't have the mental fortitude to deal with that kind of situation. Um, so, yeah, I mean, those are just um, my opinions on this. Like, I have stipulations for why, when, and if I would take it. Oh, yeah, and the fourth uh, situation here as well is I want at least some somewhat long-term studies. I don't want to be taking experimental drugs the second that they're hitting the market. Um, that seems stupid and bizarre to me. Um, I would rather wait for a while just to see um, what happens uh, to see if there might be any recalls. Because like I said, there's already been two that have been recalled. Uh, this is what happens when you're pushing experimental drugs out. Um, but anyway, uh, that's most of what I have to say. My computer's pretty much dead right now, so uh, thank you for watching.